Hi, this is Michelle Staub. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of E.E. E. Shank's Spring Trends. I would like to introduce you to my new book from CNT called Pet Portrait Embroidery. My book teaches you everything you need to know about stitching dog and cat portraits and includes 20 patterns that are suitable for both beginner and intermediate embroiderers. You can follow along with the patterns or learn to create a completely custom piece of your own pet. Thank you so much and have a great day. Hi there, this is Michelle, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I print my embroidery patterns on fabric with my printer. So, let's get started. You will need a printer, of course, sticker label paper, a non-fuzzy fabric, preferably cotton, and sharp scissors. Okay, to start this off, if your fabric has a right side and a wrong side, place the right side down and put your sticker paper on the wrong side. This way, your printer will print the pattern on the good side of your fabric. It's okay if your fabric is a little wrinkled, but feel free to iron it beforehand if it's a thinner fabric. Take your sticker paper and place it down on your fabric and smooth everything out. I could fit a second one on here, but I'll just save this fabric for later. Before we cut the extra fabric, I'm going to flip it over and smooth out any bumps I see. Kind of like if you were putting a screen protector on your phone. You want this to be as flat as possible. If your fabric has big lumps in it, you can tug it a bit to smooth it out. You also want to make sure there aren't any pet hairs or fuzzies on your fabric. You want it nice and clean and flat as possible so it won't get caught in your printer. This is where you'll want to be super precise. Cut as close to the paper as possible and it's totally okay if you cut a little bit of the edge of the paper too. You can use a rotary blade with this if that's what you have on hand, but I just like a pair of super sharp fabric scissors. Carefully go around all the edges. Make sure when you're done, there are no fabric fibers or little fuzzy bits hanging over the edge that can get caught in your printer. On the subject of printers, you would not want to try this if you have an expensive printer. I have a cheap one I got on Black Friday a few years ago. Um, it's a Brother black and white laser printer. I don't know if there's any difference between laser printing and using ink to print with different types of fabric and how it affects your embroidery or your pattern. I don't know if the ink would bleed and stain your fabric. Mine doesn't and I've never had an issue with it. Printing time. If you're doing just black outlines as a pattern, you should lower the opacity of your print to about 40% or lower. That way the lines won't be too dark on your fabric. You should also do a test print beforehand to make sure the pattern will fit in your hoop. And that's it, it's literally that simple. Now, since it is on paper, um, it's a rectangle, but you can cut off the extra fabric if it gets in your way. Um, a standard eight and a half by 11 piece of paper will fit any hoop up to a seven inch size. And here's my pattern that sized for a six inch hoop. And here's a seven inch hoop. Um, you can see that there is just a little bit of extra fabric on the sides, just enough to make it work. But you can see that with an eight inch hoop, there's just no way it's going to work. There's no extra fabric to put in the hoop and it, it just wouldn't work out. <laughs> So all you have to do now is find the edge and peel off the sticker paper. If your fabric is thinner, be careful with this part or else it can cause the edges of your fabric to fray. And you cannot reuse this paper, so just throw it out. Now you're ready to start stitching. 
So the pattern that I printed out for this video is my Cozy Koala pattern that you can find in my Etsy shop. It's a downloadable PDF that includes steps for gathering materials and starting your embroidery, three different types of stitches, a full photo guide to show you how to stitch each section, and information about finishing your hoop. You can find a link for this in the description bar. My patterns are sized to fit a 6 inch hoop, so you can print them out the same way I've showed you in this video, but I would still definitely do a test print on a piece of paper first. So let me give you some more info about printing on fabric along with some disclaimers. Firstly, if you touch your pattern a lot, it will rub off, but this is also kind of good because if you need to wash away your pattern when you're done, it will easily rinse away. However, this could be bad if you handle your embroidery a lot while you're working and your hand rubs off a part of the pattern that you haven't stitched yet. Also note that it is inevitable that at some point you will get a stray fuzzy on your fabric that will catch in the printer and make a smudge with the ink or the toner. If that happens, don't worry. Just take a Q-tip with some rubbing alcohol and gently dab it away. When it dries, it will be good as new. I love using this method to transfer my pattern to my fabric because the patterns that I make are pretty detailed and I tend to lose a lot of the small details when I use my iPad like a light box and trace with the fabric on top. Um, this way the pattern is 100% accurate. It's also really helpful if you're doing a pattern with text and everything needs to be aligned and straight and perfect. I also love this method because it is so easy. You don't have to perfectly align double-sided tape, use any sort of spray adhesive, figure out how to reverse the image. You don't have to fiddle with an iron to set the ink or anything. Just stick, print, and stitch. If you're not planning on washing your embroidery when it's done, then I suggest making the lines of your pattern really thin so the thread can completely cover them. That's also why I suggest you make the opacity lower. I definitely wouldn't use it in a way where the print marks will be visible as part of the design though. Even if you don't touch them, they will still fade um, unless you use archival ink in your printer. This is also why I wouldn't recommend using a printed design as part of your embroidery. Like imagine having a colored printed background with embroidery on top and then the whole background fades away. That would look so weird. Um, but a printer that uses archival ink is probably really expensive, so I wouldn't recommend taking a chance and putting fabric through it because you never know if it's going to snag or if part of the fabric will fall off like some of the fuzzy bits and get caught in your printer and jam the whole thing up. It could be a huge mess. Obviously, you can't use this technique on black fabric, but if you have darker fabric, you can just print your pattern on a higher opacity so you can see the lines. I've used this technique on colored fabric before, like blues and pinks and greens, and it's all worked fine. Um, speaking of fabrics, I would only do this with fabric that isn't fuzzy or stretchy, uh, like do not absolutely do not put felt or fleece through your printer um, and please <laughs> please don't come for me if you try this and your fabric gets stuck um, this is just what works for me and this is my method and how I've been doing it I've actually printed over 200 patterns with this method and I haven't had any issues or errors or anything bad happen uh, fingers crossed my printer still works normal um, if I have to print a shipping label or anything like that I think the Brother black and white printer works really well for this because the black toner is 100% black and isn't mixed with any other print colors. There is no chance that some other color is going to sneak in there. And some weird thing I noticed with my printer at least is that if you print something with a white background, there will be a slight gray background on the fabric. So I always make sure to put my pattern in Photoshop and print it with a transparent background instead. Anyway, here's what the finished pattern looks like. And yeah, that is basically it. It is really just super simple. Um, you just have to like kind of be smart about it. Um, you know, if you want to take this risk, it is your printer. Do what you want with it, I guess. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this helpful. 
And of course, if you have any questions for me, feel free to leave them as a comment or send me a message or anything like that on any of my social media. Um, oh, by the way, you can find me at Stitching Sabbatical on basically any platform. So send me a message if you use this and it helped you or feel free to share this video if it helped you and inform others of how easy it can be to transfer your embroidery pattern. So yeah, that's it. Thanks. Bye.